What appointments were offered to you by President Jimmy Carter after he was elected? Oh, Secretary of the Army. <laughs> and what did you do? I said no. <laughs> Why not? Well, I knew the guy who was the Secretary of the Army didn't run the Army. That was the first thing I knew. <laughs> Secretary of Defense runs the, runs the Army. And I'd been in the Army for five years from the time I was, so I figured I had my stint in the Army. I wasn't <laughs> too happy about that. So I had a former law partner, who, uh, Cliff Alexander, so I gave his name and said, why don't you talk to him? And on top of that, I said, I told him, I said, I'm a, I'm a businessman in the bank, I'm not, you know, I don't want to do that. So I went away. And I was, where was I? I was in, um, I was in Haifa. And I'm looking at the television, and they had the blackout in the city. I see all these people marching through fake coat windows. <laughs> I said, no, no, no. <laughs> so we finally, uh, I get back, and then he calls for me, and he says, I got a, just a job for you. I said, the president of the Overseas Private Investment Company. I said, never heard of it. He says, well, it's a government agency that finances and American companies doing business overseas and has, has relationships with 100 countries. You'd be... United States ambassador at large, and you run this thing. I said, okay. I said, but I can't right now. I said, because I had this blackout, and I, had, I think we had over a million dollars worth of damage. And I said, I got to get my business back. He said, I'll tell you what I'll do. He said, you go back and get everything done. He said, I'll hold until you get ready to go. So I went back. I fixed up the place and got everything going. Everything went down. Our computers went down. In fact, it was so bad, we were using Wang computers. And I called Wang, and they said they couldn't help me for six months. That was the famous blackout in New York City. Yeah. Yes. So I got on the phone and I called. Wang was located then in Lowell, Massachusetts, <laughs> and I called Wang. I called and I asked for Dr. Wang. Yes. And Dr. <laughs> I Wang don't got on the phone. I swear to God, Dr. <laughs> Wang got on the phone. And I said to him, I "Said, sir, you know, we're down here. We are a victim of this blackout situation, <clears throat> and if we don't get up and running, we're going to be out of business." I said, "I've got a lot of people in the inner city here who depend on us for food and for jobs." He says, "I'll see what we can do for you." You know, I think it was two weeks later, I had, I had my, all my equipment down. Oh, my goodness. Go on, Dr. Wang. <laughs> <laughs> and your tenacity. Yeah. So, yeah, we got, we got this stuff going. I never forget, we used to have, a, after you had the fire and everything else in the warehouse where I was, we had that one big table, like a dining room table, yes. and we'd have six, eight phones on the table, phones ringing, and every department, the meat department, everything, <laughs> all around the same one table. It's, it was like... Madness. <laughs> oh my goodness. This one went for been literally horrible. about eight weeks <laughs> until we finally got some, some kind of order and got a uh, new space and everything else. It was, it was really horrendous, I must tell you. So while you were with the uh, OPIC, you still had FEDCO. You held on to FEDCO for a right. And why did you take the position? Well, actually, the guys, the guys got on me. Uh, um, Maynard and Charlie Rangel. Maynard Jackson. Maynard Jackson, Charlie Rangel. Uh, uh, back home, I met the Ray Jones. And those guys. They all said, "Take." You know, it was like a, it was like a breakthrough, and they said, "We've we've got to get started here somehow." So this is, this is it. Go do it. So based upon all of that, I said, "Well, I better go take a shot at." It. And what were you able to achieve as the head of the OPIC? Well, we, we put a lot of people in business. Then we, I think we helped a lot of uh, foreign countries with projects and things that they wouldn't have gotten otherwise. They had a, a sympathetic ear in me. I mean, I wasn't anti you know, doing business with them. It was very difficult, and it still is very difficult doing business in Africa. And, and this only pertained to Africa? No, I did business Other all around the world. Other countries, too. Uh -huh. I, did, I, did, I negotiated the last treaty we had. That was the hundredth treaty with China, and I opened the largest trade fair ever held by the United States in Beijing in 1980. No, Shanghai. Shanghai in 1980. Shanghai, yes. Mm -hmm. So basically, um, it was it was interesting too. I mean, that was I, I, I bet I, it was. I, mean, I, I was going. I mean, I'm, I mean, they're whisking me on a boat across the Congo River to keep me out of 
the PLO's hands in, in Kinshasa. <laughs> you, know, <kind> of, <laughs> you liked all of that adventure, you know, didn't you? Weird <laughs> stuff <going on> here. <laughs> but you know, it's time to call it, call it a day. So here we are, we're back, back in reality. <laughs> when and why did you leave the post? Well, I didn't leave it. My boss left. Your boss left, so <laughs> you, Jimmy Carter. He didn't yes. get reelected, so yes. we, all, we all left. I so see. So anyhow, I got him. <clears throat> I had one more shot to come back. I remember when Bill Clinton had the. Um, What did he call it? The summit in Little Rock after he got elected and before he got sworn in. So I'm sitting beside him and he's talking. So finally, now it's about 12 o'clock. So he said, Why don't you guys go have lunch? He said, I'll stay in and hold the fort. And he's still talking to these people. And I find, and just as I'm getting out of the chair, he says, Bruce. I said, like, He said, You want to come back? I said, No. <laughs> I said, No. <laughs> That was it. <laughs> that was it. I just said no.